Today we're going to solve two practically impossible equations to solve, but with a little reasoning and some clever tricks, we'll get the solutions. So let's start with the first equation because it's a lot simpler than the other one. So how can we solve it? You know, if we apply the natural log on both sides, we get x equals to the natural log of sine of x. And how can we isolate x? It's practically impossible to do. But there's a clever trick we could use. Firstly, let's draw our two functions. So we first have the function y equals e to the x. And then we have our sine function. So this is our sine function. So we have to find x such that this function equals the other. And those points are basically when the two functions intersect. Firstly, let's consider when x is greater than 0. As you can see, e to the x is never equal to sine of x. So there's no solution to the equation when x is greater than 0. But when x is smaller than 0, the equation e to the x equals sine of x has an infinite amount of solutions. And how can we solve them? As you can see, as the function e to the x gets smaller and smaller, so as x goes to minus infinity, e to the x goes to zero. And it goes to zero very, very rapidly. And basically, we could say that e to the x is approximately the zero, so the zero function when x is very small. But we're interested in when x is very, very small. So what we have to solve is sine of x equals zero, because when sine of x equals zero, sine of x is approximately equal to e to the x. Okay, this might sound like a very stupid and simple approximation, but in reality, this is very helpful. And so sine of x equals zero when x equals to the arc sine of zero, that is zero plus k pi, that equals k pi. And we need this k here because the function sine is periodic and it has period to k pi, but it's, it is zero when the angle is pi or zero. So it is zero every k pi. But now remember that this has to be less than zero because sine of x equals e to the x for x less than zero. So what we have to do is to find for what integers k this is going to be our result. So when k pi is less than zero and this means that k has to be less than zero and k is an integer so before zero there is minus one so this works for x less or equal to minus one and so on. And this is basically our solution to the first equation. Now let's get into the second more difficult equation. The second equation is more difficult because now we have minus sine of x and the minus sign is very dangerous. Now let's draw the function y equals minus sine of x. So the function goes like this. Then it goes down again, up and down and up. Okay, so this is my drawing, it's not perfect, so I'll show you the graph on a graphic calculator. As you can see from the graphic calculator, okay, this point here should be lower. So let's draw our e to the x function better. It does like this, okay, this is better. As you can see here, the approximation minus sine of x equals zero is perfect, and we could do it. So we could say that minus sine of x equals zero, obviously when sine of x equals zero, and we get the same result as the previous equation. So x equals two e pi with k less than zero and remember that k is an integer but now we have another solution this solution here and this is 
much more complicated to find because as you can see the graph e to the x is not approximately zero in fact it is roughly 0 0.5 so uh, well we cannot make this approximation to this point but we can do another approximation this is a very 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 clever we can approximate the function minus sine of x when x is close to zero because when x is close to zero the function minus sine of x is approximately minus x this comes from the maclaurin series of sine of x and the function looks like this this is y equals minus x and i'll show you how this graph looks on a graphic calculator as you can see now these points are very very close and we could say that e to the x equals sine of x at that point when e to the x equals minus x this is a very good approximation of our function minus sine of x and now this equation turns out to be a lot simpler because we can bring e to the x to the other side so minus x e to the minus x we divide both sides by e to the x equals to one and now it turns out that we could apply the Lambert w function to both sides so applying the Lambert w function on both sides we get that x equals to minus x actually equals to the Lambert w function on one and so x equals to the Lambert w function of one and don't forget the minus sign so our solution to the second equation isn't just x equals k pi for k less than zero it is also x equals to minus the w function of one how cool is this and this is a very precise approximation as you saw from the graph if you enjoyed this video leave a thumbs up share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see ya